It chugs across northern India, clocking plenty of miles, of course. But more significantly, this train transports tourists through time. Even before guests step on board, there's plenty of pageantry to set the tone. Here we met the Campbell family from Baltimore, starting their week-long holiday on this train called Maharaja's Express. We're particularly enamored with the idea of the Maharaja's. Why? <laughs> well, it just seems like a very exotic time. The Maharajas, you likely recall, controlled parts of India during the 19th and first half of the 20th centuries. They were flamboyant rulers, to say the least. In their apparel, in their palaces, in everything, the intention was to show people that they were different and that they were rulers and that was why they were different. It was about show, but it was about maintaining power. Absolutely, yes. Sir Mark Tully, a journalist and train enthusiast, explains Maharajas were empowered by British colonists to help control parts of India. It was a time when the British were building railroads across the subcontinent, and trains were considered a sign of modernity and wealth. The railways were very important to Maharajas because they were prestigious things. And if you look at the trains, uh, you can see that they were especially built very obviously, blatantly luxurious, so that they would impress anyone who saw them. Ashley Campbell was certainly impressed with this modern-day remake as her family stepped into their staterooms. This is awesome. Maharaja's Express is the result of a public-private partnership designed to boost tourism. Up to 23 coaches can fit as many as 88 passengers. It's complete with a boutique, bars, and two restaurants. The train generally travels at night. This seven-day trip took tourists from Delhi to Jaipur to Agra, home of the Taj Mahal. Then on to other stops in North India, including Varanasi, and back to Delhi. A week of eating and sleeping on a train means this place is a key part of the equation. And John Stone has been the onboard chef here for three years. The pepper which we are using is very similar to paprika. It only gives out the color and not the heat. He whips up Western and Indian food from this moving kitchen, the size of, well, a train car. He seems utterly unfazed by the whole thing. Just let Stone visits each and every table and prides himself on accommodating any request. Did you sleep well? We sat down together in a dining room with a whimsical peacock theme. He explained the meaning of Maharaja. Maha means big and Raja means king. When you combine both the words, it becomes a big king. That means a king who's superior to all the other kings. Stone is quite sure this train and his cooking lives up to such a name. You For him, working here was, Punjabi well, a process of elimination. I worked on the cruise lines. I worked for a seven star, a five star. I worked for palaces and resorts. I've done outdoor caterings. I've done camp caterings. I've done air catering. The only catering left for me was train catering. <laughs> so, so I so got this opportunity and I grabbed it. To India. It was also something different for the Campbells, who traveled around the world as a family, but never quite like this, says Colin. From whatever I think we could imagine, this has exceeded that, from the environment to the service to, to every detail. They took in the sights, even playing a bit of elephant polo in Jaipur. It's hardly a bargain vacation, though. A cabin for the week costs at least $5,000, but is complete with everyday comforts that seem luxurious on a train. For those who really want to splurge, the presidential suite can be yours for $23,000 a week. Visitors to New Delhi's National Rail Museum can see the real thing, original Maharaja's trains on display. This train car was built in 1899 here in India with help from the British. It was built for one of the Maharajas. It has been restored and you can imagine how opulent it was for the time. This is the living quarters with its wood panels. It has a 
fully functioning bathroom and was part of a three car train. There was another car that was for dining and another just for the Maharaja's wife. The idea really was that the Maharaja should ride in something which was very special, very different to what anyone else rode in. Your typical Indian train experience looks a little more like this, with passengers crammed into old cars. It's not exactly luxurious. Misery and suffering. James Campbell admitted to feeling a little guilt seeing India's poverty pass by the train window, but remarked the Maharajas provided such color to history. There were some extravagant, over-the-top things that these Maharajis did not too many years ago. One thing that we read that really stuck with us, they certainly made this a much less boring life. There was nothing boring about disembarking at this station near Jaipur, where this made-for-tourists scene would have perhaps impressed even a Maharaja.